Our premium courses, one of the most popular photography e-learning you can find on the internet, was launched in May 2020. And right up to today, we have close to 200 video lessons on photography on a huge wide genre delivered every week to our subscribers. So in this video, I'd like to share with you the lesson that was launched in premium courses not too long ago. Enjoy. Light source gives out colors. It is these colors that makes photography so interesting. It is also these colors that allow you to see me and me seeing you. But it is these colors that make photography sometimes a big headache because your color is not accurate. The photo that you take doesn't represent what you see of the situation or the location that you shoot. So modern cameras handle colors a few ways. Overall, the first way is white balance. The second way is color filter. We're gonna go through white balance first. White balance is where your camera counters the color that it sees or perceives to achieve white, which is balance. Let me give you an example. If your location is yellowish like this because of the tungsten light that's being used, what the camera tries to do is to add blue. However, if you go to a location that uses fluorescent light or those modern LED lights, which can be pretty blue and ghosty, what your camera would try to do is to add yellow to balance it to white. But it gets trickier than this. Strangely, being so modern, white balance is one of those areas in photography that is not enhanced a lot. So that is why we're going to learn how to do this. Modern cameras have white balance presets like this. It is because of the technology that is not good enough. That's why we have presets. The first and foremost is your auto white balance. What it does is that the camera tries to perceive and calculate what is the overall net color that it sees. Well, you can actually try this out with your own eyes. Walk into any room or go to a room which is lit up by tungsten light. All you need to do is squint your eyes. That will blur things off and give you a net value of what you see. If you happen to see more yellow than anything else, then that room is yellowish. So if you look at this camera here, it has auto white balance. And there's a range that automatic white balance works. Anything that's lower than this range or higher than this range will just fail. And that's why they give you more preset. Let's talk about the first one. It's daylight with a symbol. You see sun. But the worst part is you don't exactly know what is the range of daylight. If you're in Malaysia and Singapore, you're nearer to the equator, you can actually see that things are a little bit more yellowish on certain days. But certain days we get really beautiful blue skies, so that's confusing. And that's why I'm holding a Canon. Because most cameras would not tell you what is the approximate range of the white balance presets. So I'm going to teach you what it does. So if you look at the Canon, if you go in here, you notice that it says approximately 5200 Kelvin. Kelvin is the temperature of the light source that's burning. So that's 5200. Let's move on to the next one. The next one we will have is shade. You'll be pretty surprised if I tell you that most cameras say that the shade is above 6000. So in Canon's case, the approximate value for shade preset would be 7000 Kelvin. That's pretty helpful. So now I know that with the presets, it's trying to tell me that that place is a little bit bluish and the camera is trying to add more yellow. I know this is a little bit confusing for you. I'll cover that shortly. Let's move on in there. And then we have this symbol which stands for cloudy, which is 6000 Kelvin. And before I go further, this is important for you to understand. This is 5,000 Kelvin. 5,000 Kelvin or 5,002 Kelvin, I prefer to remember it as 5,000 Kelvin, is called white light. White, bright daylight. That's the center of your universe. Now, if there's anything that is burning bright enough, the Kelvin is going to be higher. The flame or the burning light source is going to give out bluish light in fact, so hot, it's going to end up white. You learn that in physics or in your elementary science in school, that the brighter the flame, the hotter the flame, the bluer the light. At 5,000 and anything higher, that means that light source is actually bluish. 
Now let's go below 5,000. Let's say at 4,000, it's not burning that effectively. Let's say 3,000, it's even worse. So if you look at candle flame, it's yellowish, orangey. So that's low Kelvin. The higher the Kelvin, the bluish, the whiter it gets. The lower the Kelvin of the burning light source is going to look yellowish and orangey. But why is it reversed in your camera? No, it's not reversed. What you're telling the camera is, what I'm shooting is actually bluish. So the camera will go like, oh, then let me add yellow for you. So it may be perceived, or when you're learning camera, that 5000 is white light. As you increase the Kelvin value to anything that is above 5000, like 6000, 7000, you are actually adding yellow to what you're shooting, which is blue. So if you were to go to somewhere that's, example, you were to shoot this candle flame, which is yellow. If you want to balance this to white, you should actually tell the camera what I'm shooting, this candle here, is burning at a lower Kelvin, let's say 3000. So what the camera does at 3000, it will add blue. So that goes why it looks opposite when you look at a camera. But not to confuse yourself, now you understand that it's not exactly opposite. You're telling the camera what you're shooting and what's the Kelvin. So let's make this easier to understand. I know a lot of viewers and beginners write to me saying that, hey, Andrew, your Kelvin value confuses me. It's opposite. It's not. So here's how you remember this. Anything that's past 5,000 on the Kelvin value, the camera adds yellow, like the evening sky. And anything that's below 5,000, the camera is adding blue. Now that's it. Let's come back to the preset. And this is why it's helpful. So I know that cloudy location, the approximate value is 6,000. And then we have the tungsten light. It says 3,200, which is quite accurate. If you go to any store, electrical store, and buy yourself one of these incandescent light, if you look at a box of this tungsten bulb, it will tell you exactly what is the Kelvin that this bulb gives out. And it's most of the time at about 3,200 or 3,300 Kelvin, which is accurate. What? Canon here is 3200 Kelvin. And then we move on. This thing looks like a centipede. It's actually fluorescent tube, which is 4000 Kelvin. Strange. I would expect fluorescent tube to be bluish. But anyway, I mean, who actually uses this anymore? And then as we move on, you have the flash. And strangely, you notice that it doesn't have a value. There's no Kelvin associated to it. Well, flash generally a little bit more bluish. The lamp that gives out the light is a little bit more bluish. So if you're going to fire a flash, there's a trick to this. You can either use Kelvin or flip to automatic white balance. I noticed that modern cameras, if you turn to AWB, it functions very well because it works in tandem with the flash. The camera would look at the flash and then applies that white balance based on what the flash light source is. And then finally, we have the custom preset. This is interesting. What it means is that when you go to a location, you take a picture, you tell the camera, Oi! Follow this picture. Apply the white balance against the newer coming pictures against this picture that I've taken here. Kind of confusing. Different camera does it differently. And finally, we have the Kelvin. So simple. If you're going to go out and buy yourself a camera, and you are very serious about photography, or even you might be going pro, one of the main criteria is your camera must have a Kelvin value. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get our creative director, Helen, to make a simple graphic that you can keep in your phone, that you can refer to with all these white balance preset and the associated Kelvin value. That way, with the reference guide in your phone always, it will be pretty helpful for you to know what white balance to use under what Kelvin. So remember this, in summary, 5000 is white light. Anything that is after 5000, you are adding yellow. Anything that is below 5000, 3000, 2000, you are actually adding blue to the shot. Oh hey, if you own a Nikon, pretty sad. It doesn't show you the corresponding Kelvin value. Do you know that in the Nikon camera, you actually have this button that you can press and... Oh, it does. It does. You press the question mark button, it tells you, but this is so not intuitive. Okay, in candescent, we expect it to be 3200. It's 3000 according to Nikon. And then fluorescent. No, nope. doesn't say anything. Direct sunlight is 5200 according to Nikon, same as Canon. Flash, 
is 5400. This is so funny. Canon says that a camera flash, according to Canon, is 4000 Kelvin. According to Nikon, a flash is 5400 Kelvin, which is accurate. I always believe that flash is more blue, and hence the camera needs to add yellow. Cloudy was 7,000 on the Canon, this is 6,000. And then Shade, it's 8,000 Kelvin. Doesn't make sense. But anyway, refer to the white balance preset guide that Helen has made for you. You like what you learned in this video? That was found in our premium courses launch not too long ago. So head on to this link, sign up and enjoy as a subscriber. Get fresh new lessons uploaded every week. Thank you.